There's drones in the sky and there's drones on the road, but have you ever seen a drone of the water? We are here at DARPA's ACTUV christening of this 130-foot autonomous vessel that's probably going to change the way the Navy operates in 10 years. What it's supposed to do is autonomously track submarines, perhaps even look for mines in the open water. Over the last six years, this vessel has turned from concept into what you see here, a 130-foot autonomous vessel ready to launch here in Portland, Oregon. So why don't we go talk to a few of the people that have made this happen. I'm here with DARPA project manager Scott Littlefield here in the active site in Portland. And if you could just tell us a little bit about the active and sort of its process into finally making its way into the water. Sure. So we've been at this for several years. Uh, what we're building is a large unmanned surface vehicle that's designed to uh, basically stay out to sea for weeks to months at a time. Uh, it's got a lot of endurance, can carry a lot of payload, uh, and it's highly autonomous. So uh, the DARPA program has really been focused on developing the autonomy to allow it to operate safely at sea and obey the rules of the road at sea, not uh, collide with other vessels, uh, and actually then hopefully do useful missions for the Navy. Uh, and so this prototype is going to help us figure out um, how to do that and what it's good for. Was it a very bumpy road getting it to be as smart as it is today? Uh, I'd say it was in the sense that we, uh, we kind of had uh, some fundamental ideas of how the algorithms ought to work and how to write the software and then we were testing it uh, in a system integration lab on land, but we really didn't feel confident that that was enough. So we needed to get out to sea and find out how well does it really work at sea. So actually, uh, starting about two years ago, we in took essentially the brains of ACTA, the software, and installed those on a smaller vessel. Uh, which we call our surrogate boat, that process actually revealed some things that surprised us. So sometimes things that work great in the lab don't really work so well at sea. Right. And so, but I think that process of really getting to sea and learning what works and what doesn't, and then going back and understanding and diagnosing some of the problems and fixing the software, you know, that iterative process is what really has brought us to the point now where we feel very confident that it's going to work. And now it's going to be heading down to San Diego this week for further testing over the next couple of years. Can you explain a little bit about what that testing is going to consist of and, and what we can expect? One is really the technical performance of the vessel. You know, does it work as a vessel? Does the autonomy work as we expect it to? Is it reliable? Uh, and then once we kind of get over some of those sort of basic threshold questions, we'll get into testing payloads and, and testing its interoperability with other uh, man system. So we really at some point uh, before too long want to let the Navy work with it and start doing some experimentation where active is working cooperatively with manned vessels to try to perform you know real missions. I mean still in a test phase right. but but really understand how would sailors effectively use a capability like this to make uh, what they're doing uh, safer and, and more effective uh, going forward. What would you say then is the single biggest obstacle that it faces before the Navy can actually put it to use? So I think it's reliability. Um, you know, when we talk about obstacle avoidance, you know, the fact that it didn't run into another ship once is not statistically significant, right? So, and just like, you know, Google has been testing their unmanned car for years and they've got, you know, millions of miles on the road and still a lot more testing to go. I think for us really getting to that very high degree of confidence that this is just as safe and reliable as a human operated vessel uh, is probably the biggest challenge. 